What is up? Welcome to another edition of Sacktown Movie Buffs. Once again, I'm Pierre, and this is Jason. And today we are back reviewing a new film uh, that is now in theaters and also streaming as well, uh, which is going to be The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, so that is the film that we have watched. Um, I believe you saw it in theaters, correct, Jason? Yep, last night. I ended up streaming it um, from home. I think it was on HBO Max, I believe. So I ended up just streaming yep. it. I didn't have time to get to the theater as is the case a lot of times these days, but it is convenient, you know. How do you like that it is convenient that I'm able to actually, you know, stream the films at home? I don't always have to go to the theater, so I do kind of like that aspect of, of the new the new format, I guess, that we're doing right now with this COVID hybrid type thing where they're going to theaters and then also going, you know, playing things on HBO Max or, you know, renting it for a gazillion dollars on, uh, <laughs> on uh disney plus you know the corella i rented for like 30 bucks but this one was actually free on hbo max so that that made it a little bit easier for me you know if you have hbo of course if you don't have hbo then you're, you're probably still doing some kind of pain but but uh yeah so i say without further ado i say we uh get right into it so bring that in you got a special guest it looks like yeah special guest just yeah. arrived yeah. Uh, so, um, if you want two to of them. tell us about, <laughs> uh, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Us Do It. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, and actually, I do like the convenience as well of being able to watch the, you know, see it at the theater or and or uh, watch it at home. And I'll get into a little, a few more reasons about for that later on. But anyway, this is, uh, of course, The Conjuring um the devil made me do it which is the eighth film uh in the series uh eighth film in the the quote-unquote universe um it's the third <laughs> film in the uh you all taken care of there yeah we're good to go <laughs> all right cool so yeah this is a the third film in the strict uh you know uh ed and lorraine warren story you know conjuring conjuring two conjuring three kind of uh, eighth film overall in the entire franchise, um, including all the spinoffs and prequels and, and this and that. Um, so, yeah, I'm. Uh, this is another one that is uh, like the first two Conjuring films. It's based on, you know, a quote unquote true story, you know, a paranormal investigation, in this case, demonic possession uh, being um, claimed as a defense for a uh, murder trial. Um, and, you know, I, as much as, as someone like me who loves horror movies and I, you know, as much as I want to believe in that kind of stuff, uh, you know, and I love, as much as I love to hear people tell me their own stories and experiences and stuff like that, I am definitely a skeptic. So I don't know how much stock I put in, you know, the, the true story or, you know, the, the real life Warrens. Um, but I am definitely a fan of this franchise. Um, and I enjoyed this movie much in the same way that I enjoyed the first two Conjuring films. I wouldn't put it at quite the same level as the first two films in the series, and that might be because it's directed by a different person. It's not directed by James Wan this time. It's directed by oh, and I don't I don't remember his name, but he directed the Curse of Law. Uh, he directed the Curse of La Llorona, which unfortunately is probably uh, my least favorite movie in this entire franchise. <laughs> so I wasn't a big fan of that one, but. Um, I thought he did pretty good with this one. It does feel like a Conjuring film, and that's big. That's important for me. Is uh, these movies really understand the importance of lighting and set design in horror movies? And like right from the very beginning, the very first shot of the movie, uh, just the way they frame this house and the way it's lit and it looks so spooky, um, it really looks and feels like a Conjuring film, and I appreciate that. Um, the story is solid. Um, again, I don't. I didn't enjoy it quite as much as the first two. Um, but it, it does really kind of hone in on that, uh, you know, kind of Amityville style story of someone claiming, you know, the devil made me do it, you know, the devil, I was possessed and that's, that's why it, why, you know, why the murder happened again. I, I don't put a whole lot of stock in these true, the quote unquote true stories, but as a movie, it was entertaining. I liked it quite a bit. Um, it was shorter than, than I know the second one was quite long. It was well over two hours. Um, so it was, it was shorter. It was nice to see a little bit more. Um, of a leaner narrative there, even though I didn't quite like it overall as much as the first two. Um, but, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, it was pretty scary. Uh, the acting is good. 
it's a conjuring film. You know, you know what you're getting in for when you when you look when you watch one of these movies. Um, and what I was going to mention before that I kind of like the convenience of having it both places is that yes, I went to sit at the theater last night. Um, and as much as I love being back in the theater, um, I w- I'm also already being reminded of some of the things I did not miss about going to the theater. In mm-hmm. this case, it was uh, there was some guy sitting like three seats down from me uh, who was like spitting into a cup every five minutes for the entire movie. And this is a movie because it's a scary movie. You know, there's lots of moments of silence. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a pretty quiet movie, except when it gets loud and scary. Uh, so every five minutes, this guy was spitting into a cup and it was driving me kind of crazy. So I like the fact that I can now watch it at home, uh, you know, maybe next week or something. Um, and, and because even though I enjoyed the movie, I felt like I could pay attention to the movie. That was definitely distracting. And I I look Mm -hmm. forward to watching it again at home without some guy, you know, spitting, probably, you know, chewing tobacco into a cup, uh, you know, six feet to my left the entire time. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed it. Um, it's one of the better Warner Brothers slash HBO Max releases, I think. A lot of them I haven't been too crazy about. I did love Justice League. I loved um, uh, Judas and the Black uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, um, and I like this one. Um, but a lot of them have been pretty lackluster, honestly. The like, I didn't care for Wonder Wonder Woman 1984. I didn't care for the little things. I didn't care for Mortal Kombat that much. Uh, Godzilla vs Kong was all right. But this is one of the ones I enjoyed the most. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm a Conjuring fan. Uh, I like all three of these movies. Um, as far as the spinoffs go, they're kind of hit and miss. Uh, the only spinoff movie that I really liked was that latest Annabelle movie, Annabelle Comes Home. I thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, but otherwise, um, I, in general, I'm a fan of the franchise. So how about you, Kier? That was kind of a weird roundabout review, but uh, thumbs up in general. <laughs> For sure. Uh, yeah, you know, I haven't seen most of the spinoffs, really. I think I maybe saw one of the the Annabelle ones, not the, not the one that you're referring to. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't seen most of the spinoffs, but I definitely love the first two Conjurings for sure. Um, and then um, obviously about whether or not the stories are believable, whether you believe the Warrens and, and that kind of stuff. And and they take liberties with, with, with all three of the films. Um, and I'll get into that in just a second. But, you know, I'm the kind of person that, that, that will definitely, after I see the film, I like to just go back and just kind of read a little bit about the actual investigation or the actual case and things of that nature, just to kind of see, like, how close to at least the war and story that the films were. Um, the first two were actually pretty, pretty close for the most part in terms of in terms of being close to their story. Now, whether you believe their story or not, that's that's a that's here neither here nor there. But. Um, the first two were actually pretty close about the the events that happened in terms of what they said happened in terms of, you know, the families that they interacted with and, and you know, had to, you know, that somebody was possessed and having to go through and do the uh, the exorcism and that, whatever they did, you know what I mean, in order to alleviate the possession of, of the, the demon or whatever case may be. Um, so at least that part for the first two, I know we're, we're pretty dead on. Uh, this one I thought was a little bit more of a drop off. Just overall, um, I didn't I didn't think it was quite as good as the first two. Um, I I just thought it was it was not as uh, I don't know. It's just something about this one, and I I think that maybe because it was a different director. To me, I didn't feel like it. It didn't feel quite like the like the first two Conjurings, and I didn't think it was quite as scary as the first two Conjurings. Yeah. Either. True. Yeah, it was quite as scary as the first two. So, so which I me, thought the first two were genuinely a, scary. Yeah, the first two were generally scary and generally freaked me out. This one, I, I really wasn't scared ever. There was nothing that mm-hmm. was really. There is always the, some scary visuals or images and that sort of stuff, but it just it didn't like it didn't sit with me as long as like the first two did the first time I saw it. You know what I mean? Like you know, that's to me that's a general sign of of a horror movie. Like when it's done and it still kind of sits with me. I'm like wow, that was pretty creepy. You know, but this one ended. I was just kind of like it was good, but I, I wasn't like really scared. There was no parts where I was just like ooh on the edge of my seats. Really, I felt like. Like the whole movie, so I just didn't get that same feeling that I had for the first two. And like I said, maybe a different director, maybe it's just because it's the third part of the series. You know, it's a lot of different things that I that I could probably point to. But you know, if it's enjoyable, um, you know, and I, if you're asking that question, I would say it is enjoyable. I was never bored mm-hmm. or anything like that. I was never like, oh my god, that's stupid or anything of that nature. What I will say about this one, and you know, whether you. Uh, not everybody does what I do, whereas, it, and I don't always do this horror movies, but if, if it's a horror movie that's supposed to be based on the truth, 
I will go back and do a little bit of research. There was a part of this film that even watching it kind of bothered me a little bit, and I kind of was wondering because there, there's like a whole like side story, and I don't want to go into spoilers or anything like that of, about the possession in this one, which is different than the first two. Um, so there is a side story in this in this in this one um, that is different from the first two, where it was pretty much just you know there's something in this house, or they're trying to like get this evil spirit out this one had a whole nother sub side story to it which was different than the first two and i don't know maybe they did that on purpose just to kind of make it so it wasn't the exact same thing over and over again repetitive kind of thing but when i did go back and research it i found out that that entire side story was basically kind of made up um so uh so for me that kind of was also a little like it's like uh you, you because i was already watching it and just like is, is all this really happening is all this and so for me it I was already going into it kind of like when I was watching, I was already kind of like really wondering because I felt like this one warranted more going back and actually seeing, you know, what really supposedly happened in that case. Cause it's a, it's a real case that happened back in what 1981 or whatever it was. Um, so you obviously want to see kind of what, you know, what really transpired in that case, you know, the, you know, what was, you know, because like, like, like we said, it's one of the first cases where they actually were able to present that, uh, you know, the devil, you know, force this person to, to kill somebody, you know what I mean? And so I kind of want to just kind of see, you know, what, what happened in that just to kind of figure out more about that case. Cause I was interested, I was generally fascinated about that case. And, 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 you know, a lot of what happened in that part of the story was, was, was pretty close to what happened in the court case was pretty close to what the Warren said happened, but then they added this whole other side story. And, that was completely fabricated. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so this one was also the less true, if you will, of the three also. So, and so that kind of yeah, bothered yeah. me a little bit also. Um, it bothered me while watching it, but it bothered me even further when I was just like, oh my God, they completely made all that up anyways. You know what I mean? So just for mm -hmm. entertainment. And it bothered me about it. You know what I mean? So, um, so I also kind of weighted it down just a little bit based on that also. But, you know, if you ask me if I enjoyed it, I did enjoy it. I had a good time. It just It's just not as scary, and it's even more fabricated than the first two. Um, so I take that with a grain of salt. But um, obviously, if you're going into it and you're hoping to be scared and terrified, I don't know if you're going to be that scared and terrified in this one. You know, there are some scary moments. Um, it's definitely an interesting story, um, but I don't. I, I can't say that I'm gonna be. You're gonna watch it and be like, "Oh my god, that was so scary." You know what I mean? I just, I just, I didn't get that feeling, and I'm not one that necessarily always scares easily. Anyways, I know there's some people that uh -huh. jump every time something there's a jump scare on a screen or, you know, whatever case may be. I just know people that are that way. I'm not usually that way. It usually takes a little bit more for for me to be, you know, terrified. But the first two were generally terrifying. I mean, the first two I was, I was, I was generally, generally scared. You know, the, you know, the second one, I think even I liked even more so than the first one, um, because, you know, the nun, I didn't watch the, the actual mm. movie, but the nun in there is just terrifying looking the first time you see her. You know what I mean? It's just scary, scary stuff. Um, this one, like I said, I, I don't know. It just it just didn't it didn't quite scare me. And, and if you're a horror movie and you really don't scare me that often, it's like, well, how, how good can I say it really was kind of thing. So but. Mm -hmm. It's a decent story. It is shorter, so I will give it that. And you know, like I said, and I did like it. So, else? yeah, one thing, uh, one thing it does do. Like I will agree that it's not as quite as scary, uh, but it does do a good job of. Um, uh, the finale is pretty intense. I'll say that. Like you know, one one of my favorite things that a good horror movie does is where it, um, you know, it cuts between several things happening at once in different places and this movie does that really well i mean a lot of horror movies do it really well but it's one of my favorite things personally when there's like two climaxes happening at the same time and it kind of cuts between both of them and they're both kind of like compelling equally compelling uh this does a good job of doing that like two things you know two th two climaxes are happening in different places basically and it, it 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 does a good job of cutting between them to where uh building suspense that way so Maybe not, yeah, maybe not as scary, but it does do a good job with uh, suspense and, you know, just the general intensity. So yeah, I'm yeah, looking forward I, to seeing how it does second time. Yeah, and I generally yeah. enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, a Quiet Place 2 does the same situation where they're in different locations and there's two, uh, two events happening at the same time that are both equally kind of scary and, you know what I mean, and, and 
you kind of feel like one has to happen in order for the other to not happen. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Like they got to resolve right, the first right. one in order for the second one to get resolved. So uh, definitely yeah. can agree with that for sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it definitely does do that for sure. Um, but like I said, my only, my only gripe is that it, that part didn't feel as genuine <laughs> as the, as the other stuff at the house. And then when I find out that it wasn't genuine, I, I don't know, it, it kind of, it makes me feel kind of a little differently about it. And, and like I said, if, if it was a completely fabricated story to begin with, I might've probably forgiven it, you know what I mean? A little more, but, um, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I didn't like it because of that. It, it just, it does make me kind of like, like, uh, it's kind of a cheapy way to kind of make it scarier than like, you didn't have enough material there to just go off of the actual case. You had to kind of throw in additional stuff in order to, to try to make it scarier kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about, but I'll 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 ask you after we're done here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but yeah, but you know, other than that, I I did enjoy it. Like I said, it's 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 not a bad film. Um, it's it's not. I can't even say it's. I mean, just talking about uh, a quiet place too. I I probably enjoy I enjoyed that one better in my opinion. I thought that was a better made film um, in terms of horror, different type of horror. Obviously, that was more aliens versus de demons and that sort of thing. But um, I, I felt like that one was a, was a more uh, a better told story overall, all the way through. Mm -hmm. in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, not bad. And I don't know. It seems like it's a lot of horror movies that have been coming out this year. I don't know about if, if you feel that way, but I, it seems like it's been a lot. I feel like we've been watching a lot of horror movies or a lot of like spiral, you know what I mean? It's like been like all the big movies that have been coming out for the last few weeks. I feel like we're horror movies. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm always watching horror movies, so it's hard for me to tell. But yeah, there's been a few in a row, which is nice. You know, yeah. I mean, um, all the big, all the big movies that were coming out each week, like it was Spiral, and then A Quiet Place, and now The Conjuring. You know what I mean? It just, it just felt like it was like kind of a lot of like horror movies on the docket that were coming up. So, which I don't have a problem with that. I just, I just, I just noticed it. So, yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they all kind of wanted to come out around this time, but they all didn't want to like compete with each other, so they kind of staggered them out for like a week or two between each one or something. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Oh, Army of the Dead. Army of the yeah, Dead. Yeah, Army of the Dead. That's yeah, kind no, of action yeah. horror, but yeah, uh, horror, yeah definitely yeah, horror, horror related. Horror. So yeah, it was like yeah. Said, it just just seems like it was a lot of horror movies that came out in a in a span. I feel like we've done a lot of horror reviews in the last in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So works for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's your it's your genre. It's your genre. Yep. But yep. you know, there'll be some action coming up soon, man. You got the Fast and Furious coming. <laughs> I know you're looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Really. <laughs> I could use a good nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else you want to add about The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It? Nope. Cool. All right. Without further ado, let's get into those reviews. Uh, what is the overall grade and face you would give The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It? Well, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, so it's going to get my, my new favorite grade, uh, which is a B plus, four out of five. I'd say about lower mid-range B plus. I don't know. I need to watch it again. Uh, but uh, I liked it a lot. Four out of five. So it's a nice big smile. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to watching it again without somebody uh, constantly spitting to my left. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that sounds like that would be annoying. And yeah, and going back to your original yeah. point, I, I definitely, you know, it's been nice to be able to watch, you know, a bunch of movies from, from home. And, you know, so it, 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 get, it does get a little hard, you know, for me, me to get to the theater sometimes just because I'm busy with, you know, three kids at home and, you know, things of that nature. But, um, so yeah, and, and yeah, we're not always all five of us going to go, you know, <laughs> to the theater. Yeah, every time. Yeah. So, uh, so it is nice yeah. to be able to have that option. So, like I said, you know, but I do love to go to the theater still. You know, I do like to get out. I've seen quite a few films in the theater, but um, it, it's just nice to have that option to be able to watch something from home or be able to go back and rewatch something from home that's streaming concurrently. Um, like right. Wrath of Man, um, I saw that in theater. Um, but I always kind of felt like I needed to kind of see that one again. I ended up having to rent it. It was like 20 bucks, but it wasn't that big a deal. Um, so I ended up watching that again. So it's, it's just nice to be able to have that dual services. I don't know how long that's going to continue, if that's still going to continue, but it seems like it might because it seems like the films are still doing relatively well at the box office, I'm guessing, uh, from what I, from what I, I hope I, so. Um, so I, yeah. I, I don't know how they track when you stream something on HBO max or Disney yeah. Plus or whatever versus going to the theater. But, um, 
it, it seems like it's working because those who want to stay home and, and watch movies are able to do that and those who can make it to the theater are able to do that as well and you know there's still social distancing at the theater also so mm -hmm. um so they can't fill them up anyways there was a movie we were trying to see something um a few weeks ago and i can't remember what the movie was but we were going to go to the theater and see it but it was um uh oh a quiet place too um mm -hmm. because of the social distancing it was weird because even though they were like there was like a row that was like almost completely empty and i was trying to get like um four seats for that row and it wasn't it wouldn't allow it it said that they were at capacity for for that particular theater even though there was like a whole row almost it was empty. well yeah you know yeah, what I mean? It was, yeah. like, it was still kind of weird, though. I was like, well, there's nobody going to be on the other side of us. and But I don't know. It's just one of those things. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. But I, I, like I said, I, I like The Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. It definitely, I didn't think it was as strong as the, as the, the first two. Um, I, I gave it a three out of five. Um, but I did like it. Um, like I said, I did I did have some issues with, with the side story, even before I read the information. And um, and like I said, it just wasn't quite as scary as, as the first two either. So, so for me, it's, it's not going to be in that same tier or category for me. But um, but I liked it. I gave it three out of five, and I'll just give it a big smile. <laughs> no teeth in this case, though. So. No teeth. No teeth. No teeth. Cool. The devil gets no teeth. No, definitely <laughs> not. I don't smile for that devil like that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, let us know down in the comments. Have you seen The Conjuring? The Devil Made Me Do It. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, thoughts, takes. Um, you know, like I said, let us know down in the comments. Obviously, if you do comment, we ask that you not spoil the film. Um, and then, as always, if you like the channel, we ask that you like, uh, subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our updates. And we'll be back again with another show for you guys again real soon. We thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.